and gentlemen, we are now heading to the last session of the day. We have saved the best for the last, trust me. The next session is about cloud, a technology that has touched one and all. India has been at the forefront of the digital revolution as it marches forward. Cloud maturity becomes an imperative for both government and enterprises. Having a holistic view of entire infrastructure, multi-stake collaboration, and building a team equipment equipped with cloud skills have become a must. However, the process has to become faster than expected. To touch upon technology modern modernization, with cloud implementations, we have amongst us Keithi Patil, Joint President, IT and CTO, Kotak Life Insurance, Mr. Ram Kumar Ravindran, Head of Cloud and DevOps, SDDC India, Mr. Abhijit Singh, Chief Technology and Digital Officer, HDFC Limited, Mr. Ajay Patil, Head IT Infrastructure, HDB Financial Services, and to moderate this session, we have our very own Mr. E. Kumar Sharma, Deputy Editor, FE Digital. Let's welcome them. Thank you so much. The whole day we've been on Terraforma, but talking of cloud. So hopefully, I think we will, we will take it to another level, hopefully, considering that we're talking of technological modernization with uh, cloud implementation. And the purpose here is actually to look in terms of designing a holistic approach. If I may begin by... Uh, first, first a brief introduction if it's possible, a, a line or two on each so that our audience actually gets to know each of you. If we can begin from uh, you. Uh, good evening everyone uh, and thank you uh, for having me here. My name is Girti Patil. I uh, am the CTO for Kotak Life Insurance. Hi, good evening all. This is Ram Kumar. Uh, you can call me Ram. Uh, I am the head of cloud and DevOps for HSBC India. Thank you. Hi, I am Abhijit Singh. I am the uh, CTO and CDO for HDFC. Ajay Patil from HDBFS. I handle uh, IT infrastructure, security operations, enterprise architecture, PMO office, multiple things. Thanks. As you can see, we have the finest minds in this space and I think it's it's uh, very nice that you've chosen time to be here with us. Uh, if we can begin by what, what was discussing, I mean, we, we were a while ago talking about this. So uh, the point which I was also uh, talking to Mr. Ram Kumar about was this uh, right, uh, right cloud strategy, as they say, in a hybrid uh, uh, cloud environment. Uh, is it getting the kind of acceptance it should get or, or where, where do you see it actually and what's the uh, days ahead for it in your view, Kirti, if you can be. Uh, so before we talk about hybrid, let me just talk about cloud. Uh, so cloud is here, here to stay. Everybody has understood and accepted that uh, workloads will have to go to the cloud. And uh, obviously, uh, hybrid cloud is also here to stay because we may not want to lock in with one cloud service provider. Uh, so cloud is an imperative. Uh, the journeys could be different. Some would have started now, some would have started some time ago. But, but it is an imperative and it is an imperative because that will give uh, organizations uh, a competitive edge because some solutions really today are available only on the cloud. So for getting a competitive edge, you will have to go to the cloud. Uh, if you want scalability, on-demand scale, you will have to go to the cloud. And I think we've heard throughout the day that customer centricity is the key. And customers are expecting all of this, which is on-demand scalability performance uh, uh, as good as uh, on every day. So I think uh, cloud is absolutely important and organizations are embracing cloud. I, if I have to talk about our own organization, uh, earlier in, in our transformation journey, we, we had not really taken cloud as a focus area. But as we moved on, that has become a very big imperative for us. While it is not a board mandate to move everything to the cloud, uh, every workload, every transformation initiative that we look at, we evaluate and decide whether it should go to the cloud or not. Okay. What about you, Ram? So uh, the cloud strategy is uh, is something which you can't think. Uh, you know, or it's it's. I I always believe like the whole is the whole is greater than some of its parts, right? I think uh, when you talk about cloud, 
you have to ensure that what you are trying to solve in the cloud right so is that is that something which you can't bring it into your on premise is that something which we are trying to solve so we have to be very clear on you know uh, getting cloud right right so because if you if you see if you want as a bank as a hsbc right we have been into multi cloud from 2017 actually so if you see our strategy grows from you know strength to strength about you know how the cl cloud adoption has to go and if you look at it the hybrid cloud gives you a bigger advantage if i talk about a hybrid cloud a bit right what is a hybrid cloud hybrid cloud is talks about it's a, it's a combination of your private cloud and the public cloud right now where you are going to have private cloud where you are going to have your public cloud that's i think it's very key for a strategy to start with i think once we have that strategy of very clear what is something which we going to in, going into the public cloud right i think it solves most of your problem now for an example i can tell you most of your cloud service providers are using green energy today so if esg is your target i think you know it's best to move to the cloud right now because you're going to use more and more carbon offsets right if you are going to see if a scalability right uh, i think like kirti was mentioning i think cloud is the solution you want to go for ai ml which we are talking about the open ai i think everybody is talking just about uh, gen ai right but if you look at it that it's it's all open ai where it is there it's if you look at it it's all azure subscription today so how we going to use that so if you look at it like you know what you are trying to solve in cloud is going to be the most important part in the cloud strategy i believe right and if you need to have a cloud ex a culture of experimentation where you want to prove your proof of concept or a proof of value i think you can just go there spin your environment get it tried it faster if you are failing fast that's good fail faster and then come back right that's where i think you know your your cloud strategy i think should revolve around you know what is your purpose and the vision thanks so abhijit what is uh, your take on this since okay. you heard the two and i think fairly important points i think it's always difficult you know go uh, last or third or fourth you know in all of this because most of the points are covered but i think you know for us uh, what you're looking at uh, in our organization is see we were a legacy company started in 1978 and uh, grown mostly around the customer experience part where we felt that you know cloud really helps is uh, uh, in creating you know what we want to do is a composable architecture as we move forward so there are things you know that we can innovate there are things which other partners can innovate innovation doesn't need to be only you know something that we do so cloud gives us you know that beautiful medium by which we can you know take on innovation from other partners we can you know like for example a completely digital journey to make sure that uh, the home loan customers can actually do everything online is uh, working on one of our partners you know which we have invested in we have worked with them so it helps us you know bring collaboration innovation all of it together i think the other important thing is it imposes a discipline on the it people also you know because for all of us we are very notorious uh, that you know we never upgrade uh, operating system we'll never upgrade the infrastructure we will say application team will say because of application infrastructure cannot be upgraded and vice versa here it imposes that discipline for you you know to be completely up to date taking uh, making use of the best opportunities that these technologies can give so i think you know largely it is uh, uh, quite good uh, what we are also doing is regulatory as well you know you need to look at what's your bcp planning etc so in a lot of those scenarios it really helps us so we've started to leverage the cloud we wouldn't say you know we are uh, leaders in the cloud and that space but you know a lot of our journeys a lot of our apps a uh, lot of our uh, even you know uh, some of the operational work that we do is on cloud ajay uh, your thoughts okay uh, so abhijit comes from a group company uh, and he talks about legacy when in the same group I mean, we also carry some legacy, but uh, I think decision of I mean, cloud, hybrid cloud, that depends on what stage that organization is, right? So if something is probably green shoot, something like which is starting new, I mean, somebody wants to start a new NBFC, probably they will go all cloud, right? Hybrid cloud or hybrid infrastructure will, may not be a choice out there. Now, hybrid is like the way it has grown because people have migrated some of the loads or like some of the new technologies, new loads have come up on the cloud. 
and hybrid is the reality as Kirti said, right? So, I mean, most of the organizations worth their salt will have a hybrid infrastructure that's given. I mean, nobody will be fully on cloud, fully on premise. Now, cloud decision, uh, what is the driver, right? I mean, he talked about multiple drivers. So people talk about like one of the driver is the cost, right? So if I my experience cost doesn't remain the driver. I mean, your capex might come down, but opex could go up. So over a period, your TCO increases or remains similar. So if you are going to cloud or adopting hybrid cloud, that has to be for some different reasons, which people talked about, like probably resiliency, uh, probably flexibility, right? Can you hold the mic closer to you? Yeah. yeah. So if you're talking about, uh, I think it's too loud. Then. Uh, if you're talking about cloud or hybrid cloud, what is the driver, right? So technologically hybrid is very much possible, right? There are so many gateways which are available. I mean, if I want to have a storage across two data centers, there is a storage gateway in between. I mean, it will give that. So technologically, there is no challenge. Look at what is the driver and the driver will probably decide what adoption you will have. And on over, I mean, hybrid cloud is here to stay for a longer. That's my view. Yeah. Uh, since Abhijit uh, mentioned this point about not being at the tail end, wanting to be actually in the lead when uh, sharing thoughts or gyan, let me begin in an anti-clockwise uh, direction. And if you could, Ajay, begin by, uh, we often hear, see, like, for example, moving to cloud is not something like, you know, you pick a bag and then move there. Uh, it's, it's a fairly complex and a highly investment and, uh, you know, people trained orientation and all of that, several things that come with it. Uh, is there is there a, a, a thought which often comes up is the right pace of cloud adoption? Is there is there something in that and in, especially in today's context, uh, uh, how should that be viewed? I mean, what is how do you look at it? I would okay. want each one of you so, to share. So, when I will answer about that in a brief, right? So, firstly, people are at a different stage of journey, right? I mean, every organization will at a different stage today. So everybody started with like some affinity study, like what load could go on cloud, right? That was what like called affinity study years, like few years back. And then somebody like did some POCs, UITs, and those loads went on this one, right? But today I think the way it is happening is whatever new project comes in, right? It's critically first it gets evaluated for cloud, right? And, and and that if it is feasible on a cloud, on on TCO, on security, right? And and they're like probably you are all regulated by RBI. So again, RBI regulations come into picture. There are cloud guidelines. All that, if it meets, I mean, the load goes on cloud. I mean, that is how it is working and that's how it will go. So adoption will probably look into all these aspects. If you have to be, I mean, like little quicker, uh, there are different frameworks which are available, right? So if you talk about any cloud provider, they will have a probably well-architected frameworks available. That, that becomes, I mean, probably your problem reference and basis which that option could happen. I think uh, uh, for us, you know, we've taken a playbook of, you know, how to move to cloud and uh, having done this in two, three organizations, what I realized is that uh, first and foremost, you know, it should be very clear why are you doing cloud, you know. Sometimes you always have this thing that uh, we've got mandated by the board or, you know, this the flashy new thing because of which cloud should be done. So. Uh, and one thing you forget is, you know, every CIO has a shelf life. Of course, in India, you know, people are CIOs for very long. But uh, having worked globally, I've seen, you know, that CIOs also have a shelf life of ideas, of, you know, execution that they can do. So what, what we've done is, you know, we look at one, A, does this need any technologies that the cloud is providing to you? Is it is it really at that scale here? Yeah. Uh, secondly, we'll put in, you know, that what's the business case? So let's say if you're going to do it, is it going to be net neutral compared to, you know, what you would do on-prem uh, versus cloud? Yeah, Largely, uh, it may not come out to be net neutral. You may have other things that you have to put in, agility, etc. that come in here. Yeah. Uh, third thing is we get the CISO actually first onto the project, you know, rather than getting him at last. So the CISO is actually the first guy who comes in who looks at, you know, what are the kind of security measures, etc. that need to be done. Does the cloud provide you all the security features out of the box or, you know, does it go with a higher subscription amount or do you need your organization policies and demand something else here? Yeah. And as we move forward, you know, it's also about executing in time because many projects go on forever and you're turning CapEx into OpEx. Yeah. And as you start moving more into OpEx, you know, the CFO starts to get hit 
and he will come back and say you know that this is not really working so all those things are really important you know as you move into cloud adoption i'm just curious given the transition that you're going to make and it's a matter of i think a fortnight or so when you will you will change your avatar as it were so how does this this whole uh, discussion actually in your in your context what what uh, what imperatives will it put and what can you paint a picture in terms of how we will have to redefine in the new format <laughs> you're putting me on a spot but good so i think uh, largely both companies are on a similar digital transformation journey we are also on a transformation journey the bank is also on a transformation journey and uh, largely what we felt you know at the base the principles are the same so you know uh, they have a larger uh, plate to cover we have uh, a niche product but you know we do about 30% of the book with about 5000 people so the productivity levels are very high but on a principle level you know these same things also apply uh, which we have seen somehow you know like hdb financials and uh, hdfc insurance all of us somehow you know have maintained the similar way of working and even when we were not one there were a lot of con uh, conversations that informally would happen with, within the cios within the ciso so there will be not much of a change you know in our thought process it will be similar and hopefully 2 plus 2 will become more than 4 looking for something specific but you were as one rbi governor at once told me it's good to be vague and accurate <laughs> and then he also added rather than be precise and wrong <laughs> ram what is your thoughts in terms of you know so uh, coming coming to the pace of cloud adoption right like i think uh, they covered it well i think its pace is not very important in cloud adoption i think it's a momentum it's what you are building right i think the momentum in cloud adoption is what it's it's very important like uh, jay was saying like uh, we should have abhijit sorry abhijit was saying we should have ciso first we should have a cyber resilience you know in place for us we need to look at it, how application migration and taking a uh, place into the cloud so it's it's all about momentum it's not about the pace per se right two i think we need to start thinking about when you adopt cloud right you have to maximize the potential of the cloud for an example there may be one csp your cloud service provider is very good at one thing right so go on you know kind of maximize them there right go for the next cloud service provider for something else right so i think again uh, the pace again it's what very important here is the momentum of migrating apps by a very good you know clear thought process and the process is clear there second about what is the maximization of the potential of that uh, you know that particular cloud i think the third comes you are you know uh, then the people and other transformations will come in right because if you have these two things clear i think the people know that what needs to be done i think that is because nobody of us will uh, take a decision yesterday that you know we will move into cloud and we will implement cloud implementation today so it is it is a time right it takes some time so i think the momentum is what adopting cloud is very important setting up the process understanding the cloud service providers and maximizing their potential and when it comes to cost also right you have to understand you are like to you know you have a, probably want to buy in um, you know lots of ac's and the refrigerators and all that stuff it's going to cost you right so you need to know how to use it in a in a right way so that process will clarify you that uh, okay i i don't have a capex but my opex is going to be there but how i'm going to use it if it's going to be a staff facing application can i switch it off after 8 pm can i switch it on on the next day 8, 7 am is that all makes you know lots of sense i was just talking outside as well uh, again uh, cloud cannot be a, a piece of a puzzle right it's actually a whole sum you have to understand that cloud is a whole sum when i was and i keep you was talking you have to understand devsecops plus finops is going to be the cloud for you you need to understand financial as well right Thought, no? Yeah. So you are. Your question is about pace of cloud adoption. But I am saying our objective is not to adopt the cloud. Our objective is really to solve a business problem. So first, we need to identify what is the problem that we are wanting to solve, and what is the pace at which we want to solve the business problem. Uh, now, let me just touch upon why. And and I come from a traditional organization, a 22-year-old organization. So we were pretty much uh, on-prem. for the longest time uh, so me and most of us uh, here on the panel 
would have a lot of workloads on prem and now there is something which is a cloud which is which is going to we are, we are evaluating right so my point is whenever we build solutions on prem we at that time there were two options with us which is buy versus build i'm saying it is similar here in addition to the on prem you have an option of going to the cloud that is established that this is the only these are the parameters in which i'll decide to go to the cloud and if the problem really requires going to the cloud then i think we should start that journey and do the homework as everybody has said so it's not about pace of adoption it is pace of solving the business problem okay uh, this is what i would say once we have done that right we've decided to go to the cloud then of course the pace should come in right i have decided to go to the cloud then i need to do it quickly not really that move everything to the cloud and have have a race of who who goes to the cloud first that's well said actually uh, so you touched upon uh, the the issue of talent actually which is there uh, if i can just get the thoughts and final round perhaps from from speakers here is how in especially in today's environment how to crack the challenge of talent as it were not just at the operational level but right up to the board level and and educating them and getting them sensitized to this some are evolved and they perhaps ask those questions but beyond the audit committee head but overall you know getting them to ask searching questions like what you deal on a daily basis so some sense on the talent part so to, to, you have asked two questions one is about the talent and was one one is about educational knowledge to to uh, uh, functions beyond technology so let me talk about the talent talent is really uh, a challenge today and it's not only in the area of cloud uh one because uh, the demand is far far too much than the supply and the pace at which technology is changing what you have learned today maybe what you have learned in the morning may be outdated in the evening uh so that that really is is a challenge uh so we have to continuously work on it we have to uh, work with maybe hiring interns uh, uh, tying up with educational institutes have uh, regular programs for your uh, existing people so that we have to do but in the context of the cloud and especially because i said we will we will work in a hybrid way and most of our team has learned uh, or has worked only on on prem solutions right so for them for us the challenge is that how do we make them unlearn and then relearn okay because some of the things will will not work in the cloud environment that's one the new age talent that we bring in they will understand the cloud beautifully but they will only know the cloud whereas we are working in a hybrid right so the challenge for both these types of talent is how do they not give up their knowledge but also understand the other side and work together because i have seen some of the new uh, the new talent that we have interviewed and some of them have joined us they they believe that if it is on prem then it will never work okay so they want to break everything and take everything to the cloud which is not what is going to happen so that's the challenge in in terms of of talent uh now uh, you spoke about how do we educate everybody and i think that is something that that we as ctos we as technologists need to do uh and like i uh, there are many doctors in my family okay all almost everybody is a doctor uh so they are worried about uh, the google doctors right because everybody reads they have something knee pain they go to google and they go to the doctor doctor prescribes some medicine they said no but google told me something else similar things will happen in our area also right everybody believes they understand technology because they have used zoom during the during the lockdown or they have a router at home uh, but that is half knowledge which is even more dangerous but i think it is our responsibility to very clearly very transparently put down the reasons that we are taking a particular decision like we mentioned that there is no pressure for us at least from the board to go to the cloud but if that were to happen and you as a technologist believe that this is not what we should do then we should have first the conviction that this is not right and go to whoever it takes to tell them that this is the reason why it should not be done and it and believe you me i i always used to be called but now i am doing it even more in any and every functional forum i go and i talk about technology the first training session that was conducted for our leaders in this financial year was conducted by me because everybody now understands that they need to understand technology they don't need to know coding what was what was the topic of that session uh so the topic that i chose i mean it was a 90 minute session i just talked talked about some technologies and of course i did speak about the cloud in the language that they will understand right okay. so what are the technologies i spoke about the 
digital public infrastructure because that is what they need to leverage in, in our industry. It is absolutely important for them to understand some of the regulatory changes that are happening in this space and what should they know as business people about technology. And I think that's absolutely important. Uh, some part of our time we should all keep aside for, for sharing and imparting knowledge to non-technologists. So coming about uh, the talent, right? Uh, Kirti, I think again, I, I concur with the uh, visit, like it's coming second is also now getting very difficult. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, talent, it's about, it's not about the certifications you kind of, you know, put into your resume. That is established that this is, the, only these are the parameters in which I'll decide to go to the cloud. And if the problem really requires going to the cloud, then I think we should start that journey and do the homework as everybody has said. So it's not about pace of adoption, it is pace of solving the business problem. Okay, uh, this is what I would say. Once we have done that, right, we've decided to go to the cloud, then of course the pace should come in, right? I have decided to go to the cloud, then I need to do it quickly. Not really that move everything to the cloud and have, have a race of who, who goes to the cloud first. That's well said actually. Uh, so you touched upon uh, the, the issue of talent actually, which is there. Uh, if I can just get the thoughts and final round perhaps from, from speakers here is how, in, especially in today's environment, how to crack the challenge of talent, as it were, not just at the operational level, but right up to the board level and, and educating them and getting them sensitized to this. Some are evolved and they perhaps ask those questions, but beyond the audit committee head, but overall, you know, getting them to ask searching questions like what you deal on a daily basis. So some sense on the talent part. So to, to, you have asked two questions. One is about the talent and was one, one is about educational knowledge to, to uh, uh, functions beyond technology. So let me talk about the talent. Talent is really uh, a challenge today. And it's not only in the area of cloud. Uh, one, because uh, the demand is far, far too much than the supply. And the pace at which technology is changing, what you have learned today, maybe what you have learned in the morning, may be outdated in the evening. Uh, so that, that really is, is a challenge. Uh, so we have to continuously work on it. We have to uh, work with maybe hiring interns, uh, uh, tying up with educational institutes, have uh, regular programs for your uh, existing people, so that we have to do. But in the context of the cloud, and especially because I said we will, we will work in a hybrid way, and most of our team has learned uh, or has worked only on on-prem solutions, right? So for them, for us, the challenge is that how do we make them unlearn and then relearn, okay? Because some of the things will, will not work in the cloud environment, that's one. The new age talent that we bring in, they will understand the cloud beautifully, but they will only know the cloud, whereas we are working in a hybrid, right? So the challenge for both these types of talent is, how do they not give up their knowledge, but also understand the other side and work together? Because I have seen some of the new, uh, the new talent that we have interviewed and some of them have joined us, they, they believe that if it is on-prem, then it will never work, okay? So they want to break everything and take everything to the cloud, which is not what is going to happen. So that's the challenge in, in terms of, of talent. Uh, now, uh, you spoke about how do we educate everybody. And I think that is something that, that we as CTOs, we as technologists need to do. Uh, and like, I, I, there are many doctors in my family, okay? All, almost everybody is a doctor. Uh, so they are worried about uh, the Google doctors, right? Because everybody reads, they have something, knee pain, they go to Google and they go to the doctor, doctor prescribes some medicine, they say, no, but Google told me something else. Similar things will happen in our area also, right? Everybody believes they understand technology because they have used Zoom during the, during the lockdown or they have a router at home. Uh, but that is half knowledge, which is even more dangerous. But I think it is our responsibility to very clearly, very transparently put down the reasons that we are taking a particular decision, like we mentioned that there is no pressure for us, at least from the board, to go to the cloud. But if that were to happen, and you as a technologist believe that this is not what we should do, then we should have first the conviction that this is not right, and go to whoever it takes to tell them that this is the reason why it should not be done. And, it, and believe you me, I, I always used to be called, but now I'm doing it even more. In any and every functional forum I go and I talk about technology, the first training session that was conducted for our leaders in this financial year was conducted by me. 
because everybody now understands that they need to understand technology. They don't need to know what was, what was the topic of that session? Uh, so the topic that I chose, I mean, it was a 90-minute session. I just talk, talked about some technologies. And of course, I did speak about the cloud in the language that they will understand, right? Okay. So what are the technologies? I spoke about the digital public infrastructure.